My name is Stefan Petanowski and I'm a guitarist, producer, I don't know what I am, everything in between. So yeah, I'm, as you may say, the creative director of this whole thing. During the pandemic, I found myself with a lot of time in my hands. So February, March 2020 was the period where I've actually started to collect the ideas and to start creating songs from each idea. I've started with the idea of a conceptual EP that would include four or five songs. That was the general idea, but uh, it went from four or five songs to a whole album. Uh, it was just the creative flow of everything. I've always liked the idea, I've always fantasized about conceptual album music and I've always loved that sort of style. Just the story creates this epic scenery where everything is cool and dramatic at the same time and interesting and just captures your whole attention and that was something that I wanted to create. It's not just about the music, it's the whole experience that matters, so... Yeah, when you listen to it, you, you can easily imagine yourself in a creative new world. You can put yourself into the music and create your own identity for each song, and that's something I always try to create with my music. It's not just about the music and how I approach it, it's actually down to the person who's listening to it. and that person creates the identity to the track. Eros is based around the thematic concept of, as I said, Eros, based on Freud's theory, philosophical theory, uh, something that would represent a positive emotion, something that would impact life itself, and anything that brings life into this world is actually Eros in some sort of a way. So I wanted to capture the core essence of that emotion, happiness, love, um, life, everything in between, but yeah, at the same time it was something that I needed to create. When you hear the album, I think that you can feel the positive emotion throughout the whole thing. It's, uh, it always makes you smile in some weird way, even though it's a progressive metal album. At least for me that's the case. I've wanted to create a composition that would be uh, an intro to an album, but at the same time it would uh, grab the attention to the listener immediately. At that point in my life I was listening to a bunch of African traditional tribal music. I wanted to incorporate that part, some African elements, into the whole album. And they're not just part of Tanaka, but they're part of New Moon and Shemo Mejamo and The Bath and Everywhere, they are everywhere. <laughs> At first, when I thought to myself, like, African music plus progressive metal album, it's, it doesn't make sense at all, but it somehow did. So Tanaka is the bulk of the inspiration that came from African tribal music, because you can hear the African voices and the percussions and everything like that. It was interesting and fun to, for me, to push myself and create something like that. Don't ask me how much days it took because it was literally weeks and weeks and weeks of work and just collecting info and I didn't know that I will 
actually use them into a song. It was just something, some geeky thing that I did. And it ended up sounding like the voices in Tanaka. And it's really cool because it sounds like Le Boheme from The Lion King soundtrack. New Moon represents an overture type of track that describes all of the melodies that will happen during the songs of the album. And that was actually the last song that I've created because I've wanted to create the whole album uh, to see all the themes that will go throughout the album, throughout each song, and then uh, sit and write all of the songs, all of the themes, and then incorporate them into a whole piece that will be a sort of some sort of no virtue. <laughs> it's really wild. Uh, the the Cubase session that involved this track actually had over 400 files, tracks. It made my mind go nuts at that particular time because I was obsessed with that track. It was a nightmare for mixing, but it sounds as it sounds. I've actually known Stefan for a while now and I knew what the music was gonna be before it was even made. From the moment I heard the demos I knew that this was gonna be a special album especially for anyone looking for something new in the progressive scene. We have a, some sort of a communication where 
once I sent him the files, he already, already knew uh, the sort of bass sound and the things I want in this project and it's quite a simple and easy communication because we don't use much, much words yet I know that he will end up with the parts that I like and yeah, he uh, he put his own input into the project yet it sounds like something that I would imagine and want in this project. Even though I come from a heavier metal background, uh, it was easy to incorporate my playing style into this album because we have played a lot together in the past and we knew what to expect of each other. I also faced a lot of challenges. For example, some of the songs have really fast slapping parts and I really had to dedicate myself to those much more than the others. The hardest song for me to play by a landslide was New Moon because parts of that song were in a style that I don't usually play and they were fast. But I like challenges, so I accepted it. track which is New Moon I wanted to take the keyboard parts a little further uh, one person that came in my head was actually Stefan Alexos Kitsefo and I've contacted him we are good friends and yeah he just accepted the invite and made that solo and the keyboard stuff he added his own style and made New Moon really cooler and richer in a way The third track from Eros is the self-titled track which is Eros and it's actually the first idea that I had. It was quite long ago, I think 2016 if I'm correct. Uh, the first theme. <laughs> <laughs> Trust your guts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually the whole album started from this song and that was that is why this song is called Eros. So yeah, the song goes through the two main themes that will go throughout the whole album and you can hear them in all sorts of various ways in New Moon and the Ocean Wave and Shema Majamo and the Path and those two themes are with the glue for the whole album.
first of all, I'd like to emphasize that I'm really, really excited. This is, this is, this has been huge. Like I can't emphasize enough how huge this was. I've been, only been a part of it for like the last, I don't know, for the last quarter of making of of the making of this album. So probably for the last two or three months. It feels so, it feels so huge. I've been such a small segment from like the the all from the whole concept from the whole album and it's it's so good to be that small part it's like it's, it's amazing I tried racing a restless mind reaching the This is actually the first song that I've written for my solo stuff that has vocals in it. That, that has like lyrics type of vocals, not vocals like textures, but actually has lyrics. Stefan implemented a lot of uh, lyrics that he wanted, like a lot of words that had a lot of meaning to him about the song and he put them in there. I provided some kind of like a first edition demo uh, theme of like what the lyrics should be and he he liked it a lot and we worked with that so we didn't make a lot of changes even in the structure like if you were to see the old text you wouldn't notice a lot of differences we've went through a whole phase of changing things putting this part here and that part and re erasing recording a vocal then the next day we would sit back and listen to it and we knew that something was missing so we we'd end up the other day deleting the whole thing and starting over that's song number four working title is fate to nothing oh nice how many days are left until the actual actual recording of the vocals i don't know i'm hoping this week but we'll see it depends on the lyrics nice so how much time do you do you think will the lyrics take? About a day. About a day, nice. Magično 
Кръконък и стана албо. Стана 10 песни. И от това е 5 минути и стана 50 минути. Орлич. И така, от 5 инструмента стана 20. Може да бъде ток малко со постепено, градуал и влегување. The story behind the track is that I was burnt out with creating Eros and the Restless Mind and I was so tired that day that I went to sleep and at this point I had nothing for motion wave. Went to bed and I think I woke up like at 2 a.m. and I just had a whole new idea figured out and the arrangement was in my head and I had everything done. So by 3 or 4 p uh, a.m. The same night, actually, I've recorded that idea. So yeah, the other day, the next day, I've recorded it properly and I've recorded the guitar tracks and made the drums and everything and yeah. We, as humans, always have this part of us that is creative and you don't know when inspiration will strike, so you gotta be ready. If you don't capture that inspiration at that time, It's gone. You won't ever have the same idea. Even if it's the worst idea I've ever had, I will somehow record it. Even if it's on a phone. Like, yeah, it's really something that every creative person should do. пред два дена, мислам дека беше пред последното снимање и тогаш допоташе на друга песна, ама дали мислиш дека уште колку време мислиш дека би ти требало за да ги снимаш сите работи до крај на албум? Сите што подразбираме, ако подразбираме гитари, многу сум припрагал ова една од финалните сфер. Ова е уште една песна. Подразбираме вокали, гитари и се што е во комплет. Има уште месеци, месеци, месеци од работа, ама се надевам до крај на май месец би било се готово. There are a lot of great bands out here, but I really think that this album is a firm stepping stone for the progressive scene in this region. 
and I think that because not only is this a great progressive album, but a lot of experimentation was involved in the creation process as well. For example, on bass, apart from using a 5-string electric, we also used a fretless bass for some parts. There are a few guests that I'm very proud that are in this particular piece of music. One of those guests is John Wah. Uh, he is a saxophone player in the band 1975 and in Pliny's band, which is a really... I'm really thrilled to have him first and foremost as a person into this project, involved into this project and absolutely as a musician because he is one of the top saxophone session players in the world and to have him in this music uh, be involved in this piece of music is really nuts and over the roof and something that I wouldn't have imagined in a million years. It was really cool to just hear him when I first uh, heard the raw tracks that he sent it. I knew that that was it and it sounded like the song I had in my mind so yeah it really came together as it should like it literally sounds like we were in the same room writing the part. This is the actually the third song that I've made from this album because I've had it as a as an idea and when I started working on the bridge it kind of made no sense and I didn't know where to push the song in which direction and I've left it just like that like uh, an idea after a while I worked on Eros and Chemo Mejamo and then later on I came back to this song and, and after that I kind of had a fresh perspective on this track and I have recorded it so yeah now it's called Heartsys and it's one of the singles from this album it's a really guitar based song one of the few from this album
Oké, okay, Sneeman? Ah, dit is allemaal woord, maar staat weer. The seventh track from this album is called Kafune and it is one of the most unique pieces of work I've done because it's something that nobody would have thought that I will come up with and I really love this track because it's uh, positive, short, uh, really takes you to the point and ends where it should and goes from the first theme to the solo to the again to the main theme and that's that and it ends up it clocks at two minutes and 30 something seconds puts a smile on your face let's just say it like that Also another person who is involved in this project is Filip Dimishkovsky who is a well-known jazz pianist in this region I would say because he is quite a brain he is really cool in terms of playing and improvisation and harmony he is a mastermind Yeah, the track was cool and everything, but when Philip came along, uh, he created a whole piano arrangement, which was really cool because uh, when I had the conversation with him, I didn't mention anything about the arrangement and piano. I just wanted him to play a solo on that track, and yet he made a whole arrangement. You can listen to his parts all over the track, and it's really cool because he made that melody which stand out stand out now on the piano he actually made that Eighth track from this album is called Chemo Mejamo and on this track Eric Gillette takes place. Is it's actually one of the longest tracks of this album with New Moon and the Bath. And it's really a cool track. The melody is something that I figured out during high school 
and it just kind of sat there and uh, during the pandemic it became a song because beforehand it was just a like a, an idea for a chorus or something. I think it's really unique sounding. It's one of those tracks that describes my style, the style of Eros and what I was going, going for perfectly because it has these shred moments, it has melodic moments, it has weird moments like that bridge solo with the melodic minor and all those sorts of stuff. Yet it's it is really unique, I would say. That track features thumping, and that is the first track I've done with thumping, I think. The plot twist it is that the thumping is done in the style of African traditional music, and it's not done in the style of Tosin Abasi, and that is really something new to offer to the world, at least from my eyes and my ears. Most favorite is Shimo Majamo with no doubt because it's just so fun it makes you so happy and it's 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 such a happy song and it's it has a lot of melody to it and it's really it's really it's really that I'm really honored to have in this piece of music is Eric Gillette. We all know him and we've all seen him rock on stage and shred all the way. Uh, we we know him from the Neil Morris band and Mike Portnoy's Shattered Fortress and all sorts of different projects that he was involved in. Yeah, he's a monster player. He, uh, he plays all this weird cool stuff shred moments yet he's a great keyboardist and he also sings like one of the top vocalists alive and it's really cool to see what he does with the Neil Morris band because there he is a vocalist yet a guitar player yet a keyboardist and uh, yeah I'm really thrilled to have him on board and he was a part of the song called Chemo Mejano. He did the guitar solo in, the, in that track and it's really wild to hear his unique sound all over the track. The transition into the song from this clean part to the whole thumping style African thing in the end, he made it make sense because uh, when I have heard that part before I was kind of skeptical and I wanted to throw away that last part with the African thumping but when he laid down the solo it made sense because he started melodic and kind of slow and he built it up and it made the song come alive in a way.
ninth track of this album is The Bath and that is the great big finale of this whole piece of music and it clocks at 12 minutes and something. That is the last piece of music, the last composition that I've mixed and it was the wildest. It was the one that tickled my brain the most. <laughs> it had tons of orchestration, tons of vocal layering, tons of instrumentation, not to mention guitar tracks, uh, snare samples, all those stuff, it was just wild. for the vocal mel melodies and the lyrics and the whole like story um, situation we were making that two months before the actual vocal uh, recording she literally sings two different personalities and two different emotions because uh, the lyrics behind the path is based around a positive emotion in, in a person's mind and negative emotion in other words Eros versus Thanatos and she literally sings the two parts. The part where Eros sings is much higher and uh, crystal clear and positive. The other 100 degrees is actually Thanatos, where Thanatos is much lower and aggressive sounding and very Devin Thousand desk type of vocal. And she nails the two parts like it's her comfort zone. And once you've listened to the whole song, you will understand that it's not easy to say at least to sing the two parts. To sing different personalities takes so much more than just singing. You have to put yourself into that. The thing between them was really, really nice to experience because that was the, I was one person and th those were two different stories. Um, so basically it was really, really fun to uh, make them come alive. I should be 
challenging to um, vary between the techniques. So for example, there's uh, the challenge was to create a distinction so if the chorus was um, Eros, it would be, you know, such as in the song Come with me, I'll show you the path where your heart should be And then you have the next chapter where it's Will you be? And it's, it's a completely different range and register and it's completely different it's a completely different energy and i think we had a lot of fun with that as well the things that i accomplish actually in my life are they really worth it when it all comes to death so will i be remembered is this all worth it is this all uh, going to be worth it after i'm gone uh will i uh will anyone remember what i have done before and so i think these are questions from like everyday life's perspective Sure, nothing matters after you're gone, but the world will carry what you've made, and that's what's important. If we all individually do this type of things and create and offer something to the world, the world will be a better place. At least that's my, my perspective. Of course, we concentrated on each part individually because Eros had one part, Thanatos, uh, Thanatos had another part, and then there's this human in between that's actually the main provider of the idea, will this be worth it all in the end? I was never aware that I can sing a proper lead vocal line, and in this track, I actually... Uh, went beyond my way, beyond my comfort zone, and I tried to sing. For me, that track resembles credit uh, scene from a movie. You know, when a movie ends and the credits roll, that is the track. Uh, the place of the song is a real, uh, it's a bit weird when you listen to the whole album and then you have another song, the dance song, which is a little bit like, it's not its place, like, it shouldn't be the last song on the album yet, it's the beginning. but. I will not reveal it today. <laughs> it's a peaceful track. It's something that after you've consumed a wild, wild, wild piece of music, you wrap up, take a breath and yeah, return to life. <laughs> A 
another person that is quite involved in this album is uh, Damian Apostolovsky, who does vocal textures and vocal layering all over the album. Yeah, she recorded hundreds and hundreds of vocal takes and you can hear her voice in one in Crescent. I thought that some of the parts that I've shown her, I thought that they are not possible to sing, but yeah, it's so high up. I don't know which reg register it is, but yeah, it's really cool to hear that produced by a human's voice. Yeah, so she did her parts really cool, really well. And she's all over the album, it's not just one, it's New Moon and Shemo Mejamo and The Path and everything in between. Моментално снимаме, ще снимаме, вокали. Тук е видео една от песните на вторият албум на Стефан Патановски, Коки се вика Ерос. Для мен Ерос е много голям опитан. Като опера сингър, не съм никога рекордил бекинг вокали така 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 така. И рекординг е много голям опитан за мен. Първо си мисля, че това не е възможно. Opera singer on a progressive album, big no. <laughs> but now I have a different view. I think it's really cool. It fits perfectly. in production wise and the production geeks will love this is that I've ended up putting a delay pedal on the snare it sounds really cool because once you hit the snare uh, you will hear delay coming from the left and the right and it goes an octave higher and so on and it made this this song a little bit more interesting to the production geeks. Uh, one of the aspects of the whole art is actually the artwork itself. The first thing when you hear a piece of music, let's say, or the first contact with a piece of music is not actually the music, which is really weird. It's actually the artwork. And I knew that I wanted to have something that captures your whole attention once you've seen it. So I've contacted Natasha Einat. Blew my expectations out of the roof, out of the place, out of this universe. It's so lifelike and it's so cool to see just Eros come, come alive. The first contact I've made with the picture, it was clear to me that this is what this album needs. I'm quite happy and I'm quite, quite proud to say, to be able to say that she is a part of the team. Another person that is part of this whole project and the team is Nasko Jorlev, who is the person responsible for the physical copies of Eros. Because when I've collaborated with Natasha Inat, Skip Closer, she did only the front cover. She did the artwork. It's not just the front cover, it's actually the whole piece that needs to be glued together. So Nasko did his job perfectly and he made all the back cover and then everything in between the CD and made the whole project make so much more sense now that we have the physical products. Uh, Damir Puch made the master of this album and took it to another direction because the mix was all high end and uh, typical hi-fi sort of mix because it had tons of bottom end and tons of high shelf EQ type of mix yet uh, Damir uh, kind of saturated the whole thing and ended up sounding really cool really something that is unique the mastering process for Eros started uh, a couple of weeks before the final mixes were ready. Stefan sent me some rough mixes to check out. We discussed about the general direction 
bounced ideas back and forth, and I sent some mixed notes and test masters just to make sure we're on the same page. After that, the whole process was really straightforward and enjoyable, but challenging at the same time given the nature of the material. There are a lot of different sounds, a lot of different styles, which usually means a lot of critical listening and a lot of automation. When we are talking about mastering, uh, there's uh, the technical side of things where we need to optimize the material for different playback systems. But more importantly, there's uh, the abstract artistic side as well. From a technical standpoint, even an algorithm can do a great job nowadays. But for me, mastering is the last step of the production process where we can really shape and alter the way the music feels and impacts the listener even on a subconscious level. If we take one song, we have the choice to make it sound really safe, introverted or ultra rude and aggressive and everything in between. And in this particular case, uh, one of the main artistic tweaks I did in comparison to the original mix that Stefan did was uh, shifting the balance towards the aggressive side just a tiny bit, maybe one or two percent. And that was done uh, with me trying to bring the mid-range forwards to the listener so it would impact all the mid-range elements, all the lead parts and the vocals and it would give them some additional support and weight. And I think that this particular style um, works really well with Stefan's lead playing, which obviously is very important for a guitar instrumental album. So yeah, that was basically my role for Eros. Um, I think the album turned out really great and uh, you should check it out if you haven't already. Okay, the most important moment of the album is the last one. <laughs> we'll see what the future will bring. Eros is just another step in the whole, whole world of creative emotions and music and the whole creative world that I do. To be honest, this is the most satisfying yet challenging piece of art that I've done so far in my life and I'm really 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 proud of this music because this is the first time that I've created everything and everything was in place and nothing had to be changed and there was no pressure involved there were no bad feelings bad emotions everything was just flowing and yeah, it made total sense. So, number one, I'd love to say that it's 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 really been a pleasure to be challenged because um, this wasn't like any other project that I've been... Th that really speaks for my experience as a musician because I'm still on the beginning and I'm still working my way up, but this was a great boost of my knowledge in music because no pressure was given. We were working in such a wonderful atmosphere. And it's amazing to look back on from like where we started and it was it was super cool. I am a type of person where if I don't do something right, I would be super upset about it. And this, this project, working on this project kind of taught me to not be too harsh on myself and kind of just calm down whatever I have going on in my head and implement that whole upsetness and overwhelming from negative emotions into creating something really creative. All in all, I really enjoyed the process of making this album and working with this great team of people, which makes me excited for the future and bringing this music to life on the stage. Um, the palette of vocals combined with the other instruments, the guitar as the lead instrument and the story behind each song creates a fantastic piece of art. Uh, it's uh, different from anything I've ever listened to and anything I've ever participated in. So it seems like the beginning of a new genre. You can really connect with the person behind the work when you see how he has done it or she. I wanted to create that for myself because it's something that stands way beyond time and way beyond all of us. You will be amazed by 
the powers of humans we often overlook and we tend to think that we are bad. It's really cool to see how the brain can do stuff that it's not... You can't control even if you want and somehow a greater power than you arises in you and you end up with a piece of whatever, art, music, whatever that is way beyond your abilities, at least you think that in your in that moment. Kako je čisto da ga završiš onak? Nemam pojma. Onak nikoš nema da znaš koga je finiširan. Iako je pišano tamo da se je završeno, kaj mene ko bavo nikoš nema da je završeno. Se još tek ima pravo. Jako je da vidiš na karti, konform da je završen. Definitivno.